the fear is always there that anything could happen especially in the rural areas where there have been reports of the army barging inside the houses so they would prepare themselves with uh, steel or copper utensils and uh, they would beat those so that uh, they are able to create noise and people from around the neighborhood could come and you know uh, force these army men out Arshi Kretchi is a Kashmiri researcher based in Delhi. She just returned from visiting her family at home and confirms reports that women there feel under threat. So there's a complete breakdown. You can't move out, you can't call up people to check what is happening. So no one knows what is happening. On some evenings I could only assess that something was happening because the smell of the pepper gas would reach us. There is this uh, sense of fear obviously among Kashmiri women because you know conflict affects men and women very differently and women become more vulnerable to sexual violence. A group of independent researchers recently visited Indian administered Kashmir and reported women saying they have been molested and harassed by Indian security forces. Journalists who have been on the ground have given similar reports. Indian forces have previously been accused of sexual assault in Kashmir. In February 1991, as India carried out a large military operation, soldiers allegedly raped more than 30 women in two villages. The Indian army has always denied the allegations. But the UN report says that authorities continue to thwart attempts of the survivors to get justice. And that is a reality for Kashmiri women. It's not something that is a figment of their imagination. It has happened. It has happened to schoolgirls. It has happened to. Uh, it has happened to housewives. It has happened to them when they have been under cr uh, crackdowns. India and Pakistan have long fought over Kashmir, which is one of the most militarized zones in the world. Both administer parts of Kashmir, but each country claims the region in its entirety. When India took away the autonomous status of the part of Kashmir it administers at the beginning of August, protests erupted. Phone lines and internet have all been blocked since, making it impossible to reach anyone. A mandatory curfew was introduced and armed Indian paramilitary forces have been manning the streets. So women are feeling under siege from the military industrial complex, from the military occupation, but also Indian masses as well, who are leaving no stone unturned to show the world that this is not integration, but this is annexation, this is conquering, this is very old school uh, warlike situation where women aren't being treated as spoils of war. Some Indian politicians have been making sexist remarks about Kashmiri women. Kashmir has always been fetishized in the Indian imagination. If you look at the first Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, he would often liken Kashmir to a very beautiful woman who was coveted and who was, you know, wanted by everyone. Kashmiri women have always stood out because they have they are very well known for, you know, quote unquote, this very racist trope of being fair skinned. And they have been seen as very beautiful. They have always been seen as something to be acquired and possessed. Indian men have increasingly shared this sentiment on social media since India scrapped Article 370, which gave Kashmir wide ranging autonomy. I feel I feel very objectified. I feel like a piece of land that Indians are waiting to buy. And it's like denying women their agency. It's like uh, I have a control over your body now. I have a control over your life now. You're my property now. They have released certain music videos which 
they call patriotic pop which are basically talking about the way indian men are very keen to go to kashmir and do two things number one is buy land and number two is marry kashmiri women <laughs> I, I uh, got exposed to all these music videos that basically uh, tell me how I'm a commodity that Indian man fetish about. Every gaze makes me feel like a commodity to them now. Like this patriotic pop has been so widely uh, appreciated, shared, and liked by people online. You never know. You don't know who to trust anymore in India. <laughs>